Shalom, brothers and sisters. My mom and I and my daughter were talking about Jeremiah chapter 33, um, focusing on verse 11 and verse 16. And we were talking about Psalm 45, and we were talking about the original parable of the ten virgins, um, you know, from the Aramaic Bible in plain English that I purchased on Amazon, um, knowing that my mother's mother, my grandma Pauline, her 1952 Catholic Bible includes the bridegroom and the bride in Matthew 25, 1. Okay. And, you know, it goes all the way back to the early 70s in my family. You know, my grandmother confronted when she left the Catholic Church, she came out of the Catholic Church, she stopped being a partaker of her sins and stopped receiving of her plagues. That's Thyatira in Revelation 2, 20 through 22. Um, you know, she, when she left St. Teresa, a Catholic Church in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the early 70s, um, you know, when she attended my grandfather, John Bloom's um, Pentecostal church, um, she confronted uh, in, a, in a nice way uh, the Pentecostal pastor saying, well, you know, if you say that the Lamb's wife um, is the entire church, then what's the difference between the bridegroom, the bride, and the wise virgins? And she showed him Matthew 25, 1 from her 1952 Catholic Bible, which it's extremely old. I'll leave a screenshot, um, you know, in the description box um, on one of my blog articles um, so people can see it. And um, yeah, and he never got back with her. He just quoted Ephesians 5 and, you know, he didn't explain you know, in Ephesians 5.25, the church is referred to as an it. And in Ephesians 5.33, that an actual wife of one husband is referred to as a she and a her. He always referred to Ephesians 5.22 through 32, but never covered verse 33, which proves the lamb's wife is one woman. And so my mom and I and my daughter, we talked about the original parable of the 10 virgins. And we talked about Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 11 and verse 16, because we know that when you simply go to BibleGateway.com and you type in the word bride, okay, uh, the word bride and the word bridegroom is mentioned in 25 verses in the KJV Bible. One of those verses happens to be Jeremiah 33, 11, okay, and um the 25 verses that bride or bridegroom are mentioned in um, is mentioned in Psalm 19.5, Isaiah 49.18, Isaiah 61.10, Isaiah 62.5, Jeremiah 2.32, Jeremiah 7.34, Jeremiah 69, Jeremiah 25.10, uh, Jeremiah 33, 11, Joel 2, 16, Matthew 9, 15, Matthew 25, 1, Matthew 25, 5, Matthew 25, 6, Matthew 25, 7, Matthew 25, 10, um, Mark 2, 19, Mark 2, 20, Luke 5, 34, Luke 5, 35, John chapter 2, verse 9, John 3, 29, Revelation 18, 23, Revelation 21, 2, Revelation 21, 9, and Revelation 22, 17. And these are 25 separate Bible verses that bride or bridegroom are mentioned in in the King James Version Bible, okay? And my daughter and I and my mom, we read the 33rd chapter of Yeremiahu, and we focused on verse um, 9 through 16, you know, in correlation with what the sons of Korah prophesied about in Psalm 45, 11. We know that the bride um, and the five wise virgins, they are prophesied about, obviously, in Psalm 45, 13 through 14, the five wise virgins who do go out to meet the groom and the bride. They really are her companions mentioned in Psalm 45, 14. And the bride obviously would be the daughter of the king mentioned in Psalm 45, 13. And, you know, according to verse 11, she will worship her Lord, um, you know, and I was asking my mom, how does this correlate with the scriptures mentioned in Jeremiah 33, 16? So um, we have come to a conclusion, okay? And uh, really, if you want to comment um, in the comment section, I'd be willing to debate with you. Uh, if not, if you don't feel led to, fine. But I'm, I know that he has requested 
me. And, you know, after talking with my mom and my daughter about this, you know, he wants me to put this in video format, you know, just to plant a seed because forever is a long time to be separated from Elohim. Okay. And so I'm going to read from verse nine through 16 from Jeremiah chapter 33 in the King James Version Bible. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, the Jewish people, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Thus saith the Lord, again, there shall be heard in this place which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even the cities, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts for the Lord is good for his mercy endureth forever and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause, um, wait a minute, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts again in this place, which is desolate without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof shall be an habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. This will be during the millennial reign, okay? In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth them, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel. Israel is the northern kingdom. Okay, we know that the kingdoms split in two after King Solomon reigned. Um, you know, Israel is the northern kingdom and Judah is the southern kingdom. Okay, okay. Um, Okay, let's see here. In those days and at that time will I cause... Um, actually, no, let me reread verse 14. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. Israel is the northern kingdom. Judah is the southern kingdom. Verse 15. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Now, my mom and I believe, okay, if the bride is referred to as the Lord our righteousness, Jeremiah would have written verse 11 and verse 16 in the same verse. But the bride in verse 11, nowhere does it say that, you know, she is called the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness in verse 16 is referring to the kingdom of Judah and Israel as one kingdom. They're not going to be split in two anymore. Okay, and so, yeah, you know, after we know that the bride mentioned in Revelation 18, 23, who is with the bridegroom, okay, is the same bride mentioned in Jeremiah 7, 34, okay, the sins and iniquities that she is repenting from outlined in, in Revelation 18, 4 and 5 points directly to queen of heaven idolatry that provokes Elohim to anger mentioned in Jeremiah 7, 16 through 20. She wouldn't go against these scriptures because she will worship her Lord according to Psalm 45, 11. And so we talked about this in correlation with John 4, 23, and he wants me to read Psalm 45, verse 9 through 14, and then John 4, 23, okay? And just plant a seed, you know, because really an eternity uh, without Elohim is a long time, okay? So bear with me one minute. Psalm 45, written by the sons of Korah, a song of loves. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace 
is poured into thy lips, therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty, and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness, and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God thy God hath hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen and gold of Ophir. This is the bride. She is an antitype of Esther or Hadassah. Um, hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear, forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy Lord, and worship thou him. That means the bride will worship her Lord, okay? And the daughter of Tyre shall be there at the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony with a gift, even the rich among the people. Um, shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Um, Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Okay? And so clearly praise in verse 17 is separate from the fact that she will worship her Lord. Praise and worship are separate. Okay? And so, yeah, the daughter of the king, she will worship her Lord, according to Psalm 4511. You know, the bride mentioned in Matthew 25, 1, original Aramaic version. Um, and so, you know, how does this line up um, with Jeremiah 33, 16? She shall be called the Lord our righteousness. It you have to understand the whole chapter. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel, the northern kingdom, and to the house of Judah. It will be one kingdom. It won't be two separate kingdoms no more during the millennial reign. Okay? In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days, during the millennial reign, shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. If the bride in verse 11 was the Lord our righteousness, he would have combined verse 11 and 16, but he didn't. He's talking about the Northern and Southern kingdom being combined. Okay. Yes, she's his wife, but why would, why would the bride want to be worshiped as God the mother? This is idolatry. It does not line up with the fact that she is mentioned in Jeremiah 7.34 and Revelation 18.23. You know, clearly the bridegroom and bride in these verses are the same, okay? And the bride is repenting of queen of heaven idolatry, okay? Um, Jeremiah 7, 16 through 20 points to the sins and iniquities outlined in Revelation 18, 4 and 5, okay? And so, yeah, um, we discussed this and my mom and I agree. We have read the Bible. I couldn't even, ha I couldn't tell you how many times my mom and I and my daughter have read the Bible over and over and over again. We are to be Bereans of Acts 17, 11. We are to search the scriptures daily. We are to study to shew ourselves approved unto God, um, a workman um, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. Second Timothy 2, 15. Okay. She shall be called the Lord our righteousness. It points to the northern and southern kingdom being combined, okay? I realize that people who believe in God the mother are not going to agree with me, but I am just here to plant a seed and pray the Ruach HaKadosh, the spirit of truth, waters those seeds, okay? You know, and to the lady that emailed me, um, you emailed me links about God the mother, um, how do you explain Matthew 1, 18 through 20? Okay, if the Holy Ghost is female and if the wording is not correct in John 16, 13 and in John 16, 21, 
Um, yeah, to finish this video, how do you explain Matthew 1, 18 through 20? I'm going to show you how. And so, yeah, I replied to your email and I never heard back from you, but you emailed me um, some links from a, a different channel and um, someone who does believe in God the Mother you know, knowing that King David wrote Psalm 33, 4, and knowing King David's son, Solomon, King Solomon wrote Proverbs 35 through 6, every word of Elohim is pure. Um, don't add or take away from the words of Holy Scripture, lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar. Why wouldn't these scriptures apply to John 16, 13, John 14, 16, John 16, 21, and Matthew 1, 18 through 20? Okay, and I'm going to read these scripture verses. Bear with me one minute. Okay, Matthew 1, 18 through 20, King James Version. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Okay? And so when we compare these scriptures and we realize that what King David wrote in Psalm 33, 4, that the word of the Lord is right, he's not going to marry the Holy Ghost, who is the same as the Holy Spirit, um, mentioned in 1 John chapter 5 or 6 and 1 John chapter 5 or 7. Because, you know, pneuma in the Greek um, is on Strong's um, Greek Concordance page, okay? 1 John 5, 6, and 7. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth, okay? The Holy Spirit, okay? Um, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, who is the same as the Holy Spirit in verse 6, and these three are one, okay? It doesn't say four and one. And so the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, um, he is referred to as a he and a himself seven times in John 16, 13. In the same chapter, an actual woman in labor is referred to as a she and a her, it proves that the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Ghost, did impregnate the womb of Miriam, um, and she became pregnant with the son of Father Yahweh. Yahweh's spirit is a male, okay? Um, how do you explain the Hanukkah conception of Yeshua HaMashiach? It proves the gender of the Holy Spirit, who is the same as the Holy Ghost. Jude 119 and 20 backs this up. Okay, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, even, I mean, if it was written differently, I could see your point, okay, that the Holy Ghost is separate from the Holy Spirit, but no, in the Greek, it's pneuma, okay, um, the Holy Spirit of 1 John 5, 6 is the same as the Holy Ghost of 1 John 5, 7, pneuma in the Greek. If it was different, I could see your point, but Matthew 1, 18 through 20 proves that the Holy Spirit impregnated the womb of Miriam. Okay, that proves that the Holy Spirit is not an XX. The Holy Spirit, who is the same as the Holy Ghost, is a male, an XY. Yeshua HaMashiach, he was conceived on Hanukkah when the Holy Spirit exerted creative energy upon the womb of Miriam and impregnated it. Okay, that's what overshadow means in the Koine Greek. Okay, um, and so, you know, Luke um, mentions um, in Luke 1, 34 to 35, that the Holy Spirit um, overshadowed the womb of Miriam. According to um, Strong's Greek Concordance, um, uh, overshadow means to exert creative energy upon the, the womb of Miriam and impregnate it. That means that the Holy Spirit is an XY, not an XX, okay? And so, yeah, uh, to answer your question um, when you emailed me, yeah, um, I, I'm sorry, the two links, I don't agree with it. You know, um, Matthew 1, 18 through 20 proves it wrong, okay? And so, yeah, you know, and, and this is a, a seed that I am trying to plant, um, you know, the Lord, our righteousness in um, Jeremiah thirty three sixteen that is referring to the northern and southern kingdom. OK, 
Um, I have read this Bible, I couldn't even tell you how many times. If you walked up to me and asked me how many hairs I have on my head, that's probably how many times I've read the Bible and then more. My mom and I and my daughter have read the Bible so many times we have lost count, okay? The Lord our righteousness in, in um, Jeremiah thirty three sixteen is referring to the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah being combined during the millennial reign. Following the rapture, it will be a time of Jacob's trouble, but Jacob will be saved out of it. As proven in Jeremiah 30, verse 6 and 7, it will also be the time of the heathen, as proven in Ezekiel 30, verse 3, but many of the heathens will be uh, separated. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm understanding that uh, different people are saying that all people of Jewish descent are of the serpent seed. This is a lie out of the pit of hell. This is just as bad as hyper grace, okay? Uh, if not worse, okay? The Jewish people... Uh, will be saved out of great tribulation period. That's Jeremiah 30, verse 6 and 7. They will flee to the mountains of, of Petra, Jordan, when the abomination of desolation is set up. That That's Matthew 24, okay? And, and um, I'm going to be uploading a presentation that proves that Ezekiel 37 prophesies about the Holocaust, the Valley of Dry Bones. And I'm going to prove that the fig tree of Matthew 24... Um, is the established nation of Israel from November 29, 1947, when the UN signed UN Resolution Number 181, all the way to May 14, 1948. That is the beginning stages of the fig tree, the established nation of Israel. Okay, and 70 years was marked by a blood moon tetrad or a blood moon triad. Excuse me. Um, January 31st of 2018, there was a, a blood moon lunar eclipse. July 27 of, of 2018, there was another lunar eclipse. Um, and then January 21st of 2019 was a blood moon lunar eclipse. This marked 70 years from 1948. Okay, this means the Jewish people, uh, the established nation of Israel, is the fig tree of Matthew 24. Following the rapture, it will be a time of Jacob's trouble, but Jacob will be saved out of it. It will also be the time of the heathen. And if anybody wants to say that all people of Jewish descent um, are of the serpent seed, <laughs> You're lying and you're running out of time. You know who I'm talking to, Yannick Vergari. Uh, and so, yeah, I have a screenshot of your comment. No, I, I won't put up with this for five minutes. And I'm going to prove you wrong in my next presentation. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I pray we fly home soon.